Greetings once again, this is Harry Nick. How is everyone out there going? We're back to doing these points changes for X-Wing for July of 2020, at least. Going through all the changes that FFG have enacted onto the game's meta. Um, we took a little bit of a break from these because we just had so much information coming out of Gen Con 2020. Um, so we spent most of last week going through that. But now we're going to finish this off, talk about the rest of these changes, and talk about the sort of overall impact on the meta. Um, just briefly before I go through these, yeah, this is pretty much reflective of what's been going on. Most of the changes are quite conservative, so don't expect anything major to happen out of these, but there's some interesting things nonetheless. In this video, we're going to go through all of the good guys, the Rebel, Republic, and Resistance. So without any further ado, let's jump on to the Rebellion, take a look at where the points have changed here. No changes to the B-Wing, uh, Arc-170 Starfighter, and the Attack Shuttle. And a points reduction across the board on the Azatuck gunship. Just with these three pilots. Uh, two points on Wolf Waro and the generic Kashyyyk Defender. And one point on Lorik. Uh, that makes the most sense. If any of them are going to be meta viable, it will be Lorik. However, I don't think two points and one points is going to really affect it too much. It is worth pointing out that the um, generic going down by two points is not insignificant. It's something that doesn't happen usually in this game especially considering this was a meta viable list in first edition with Magic Carpet Ride, um, four of these guys with the Wookiee Commandos. And given that second edition has a whole slew of uh, extra unique uh, upgrades, um, specifically crew members for the Rebellion, this could lead to something interesting. I don't think this is enough to make it meta viable, but it's something worth keeping an eye on and experimenting with nonetheless. Um, no changes on the Y-Wings. Moving on to the K-Wing. A two-point reduction in Miranda Doni. Um, still a pretty average ability in second edition. For those of you who don't know or didn't play in first edition, uh, Miranda Doni was a very, very top-tier meta pilot, especially with um, combinations like uh, twin laser turret and all that kind of stuff. And in second edition, she just didn't really have those kinds of crazy combos. Indeed, a siege to Ketu. Um, he's now a much more viable pilot and actually seeing some meta play here and there. The E-Wing has had a points reduction across the board. Again, no surprises. It doesn't see play all that much. Uh, Corrin Horn and the Rogue Squadron Escort, the more expensive of the two generics, is uh, reduced by two points. And Gavin Darklighter and the Knave Squadron Escort reduced by one point. Uh, we're moving on to the Hawk 290. We have a one point reduction on both the Rebel Scout and Kyle Katarn. Uh, which makes sense if we break down what's going on here. Jan Ors and Rourke Garnett are uh, the two sort of more meta-viable pilots. Rourke, of course, was seeing a lot of play at the start of the second edition meta because of his combination with Dash Render. It's no longer a thing, but it's one of those things to keep an eye out on, just make sure that no crazy combos happen there again. And Jan Ors is just obviously more powerful. So widening the gap between her points and Kyle Katarn, I think makes perfect sense there. No changes on the RZ-1 A-Wing. Moving down to the Sheetherpede class shuttle, we have a two-point reduction on Ezra Bridger, a one-point reduction on Zeb. No point reductions on Fen Rao and AP-5. I think that makes the most sense. Um, I've commented before, Zeb is a pretty useless pilot on this platform. Fen and AP-5 are the most sort of utilitarian options. Um, Fen Rao actually being a viable pilot when it comes to actually having a real impact on the board. And AP-5 being a fantastic support role. So it makes sense that they didn't get the point reduction. No changes to the T-65 X-Wing. I think that's good. I think it's in a good place right now. Um, we have Sabine's TIE Fighter. Uh, one point reduction on the top two pilots, Captain Rex and Ezra, and a two point reduction on Sabine, no point reduction on Zeb. Uh, given Zeb's already 24 points, just two more points than the regular Academy pilot on the Empire, I think this makes the most sense. Again, not really a meta viable ship, so doesn't hurt to crunch that down a little bit more. No change on the U-Wing. Moving over to some large base ships, we have the VCX-100, a four-point reduction on Kanan Jarrus. This is worth keeping an eye on. Um, FFG are really pushing to get these big ships see a bit more meta viability. Um, Kanan Jarrus was always quite a powerful pilot, especially in first edition, so it's absolutely worth keeping an eye on this pilot here. Um, also, it's just a four-point investment over Harrison Dula. So to get those force points and a very relevant ability, I think that's quite competitive. Maybe not sort of meta-competitive, but 
Um, it's very aggressive anyway. Also a one point reduction on Callus and Chopper, eh, whatever. I think I'm more interested in uh, Kane and Jarrus there if I'm to be honest. Moving over to the Falcon, we have a one point reduction in Han Solo, Lando and Chewbacca and a two point reduction in Leia which is interesting. Leia at 77 points, still cheaper than basically all the other named pilots apart from Chewie. Um, it seems really, really powerful. But of course, it's just one of those things. The Falcon has struggled to see play. We did have a bit of a meta list with Han and Jake Farrell a little while ago, like a super Han sort of combo list going on. Um, and the Falcon still doesn't have its illicit slot, so we're not going to see that happen as often but yeah I like that two point reduction on Leia I think that's worth a bit of experimentation again I don't think it's going to make it meta viable but it's worth looking at uh, moving over to the Outrider the YT2400 um, big points reduction here we have Dash Rain down by 6 points and Lebo and the generic Wild Space Freighter Fringer, sorry, um, down by five points each as well. Um, also, no points changes on any of these titles. So, uh, what Outrider is, 14 points, making Dash with Outrider 99 points. Much, much more competitive than 105 points. At least when you're trying to bounce stuff out, get a bid in there, all that kind of stuff. This ship basically only ever saw play because um, it had that combo with Raw Gunnet that I mentioned before. Um, it basically hasn't been viable since. I don't think sitting around the 100 point mark is its problem. I know a lot of people sort of complained about that. However, my response to that will look at the stats. It's got a four red dice primary. It's crazy. Um, it, it's just one of those things where they've got to sort of balance what it should look like in second edition. It's been a hard thing for FFG to do. Um, in first edition, there was obviously like the heavy laser cannon donut kind of thingamajig going on. And I think given what's going on with this, um, it's just trying to adjust expectations. Obviously, um, so many things have changed in the meta since first edition. Now, um, big ships are no longer as viable. Um, just a lot of things like, like the game has fundamentally changed. So trying to balance this has been a challenge for FFG. And I think this is a step in the right direction, so we'll see how it goes. Also, no changes on the Z95 Headhunters. Uh, moving down the list, we have some pretty non-significant changes in the Gunners as well. Bistan down by four points. Um, I've always been quite high on Bistan. I think it's absolutely worth having a look at um, because Bistan can shoot twice out of the same arc. It has that typical... Um, sort of veteran turret gunner ability where you can shoot twice, but you have to meet some kind of requirements. Bistan's always been one that I've been interested in um, because it seems to be a bit more versatile if you can manufacture it. So going from 14 to 10 points seems really, really good. Also, Ezra and Han down by two points each. Um, Han doesn't have that silly combo anymore with Dash, so that seems all right to me. Let's move over to the Republic now. Um, starting off with the ARC-170, we have a two-point reduction on Oddball. Um, Oddball, not super crazy in terms of power level on the ARC. It's not a very easy ability to enact on this platform. The platform overall really hasn't seen all that much play. Um, sort of curious as to why it wasn't reduced, but there are other heavy reductions in this um, faction, so I think that's all right. Moving over to the Y-Wing, we have point reductions pretty much across the board, except for the two pilots that actually are seeing meta play in matchstick and broadside, so hopefully this will sort of bring a bit more diversity to this platform. Um, speaking of which, we actually have Oddball coming down from 44 points to 42, making him cheaper than matchstick now, so that might offer something there at least. Most notably, Anakin Skywalker is down from 60 to 55 points. Seems fine. This isn't the craziest platform for Jedi. But obviously we have to be conservative with these kinds of abilities. Anakin Skywalker is pretty much no joke on any platform he's on. Um, apart from that, we have a three-point reduction in R2 and Goji, and a one-point reduction on both of the generics. Um, bring the Wed Squadron Brummer, the cheapest one, down to 29 points. Not totally insignificant. Again, we're talking about the cheapest generic, so comboing it with um, various secondary weapons, maybe a gunner as well. 
um, there might be something opened up. When we get to the stage in these videos where we talk about generic upgrades, I'll go into this in a bit more detail because it absolutely warrants a discussion. Uh, the Delta 7 Aether Sprite, we have a one point increase in Obi-Wan Mace Windu Plukoon. Yes, these all seem to play, that makes perfect sense. Um, just also on the subject of the Aether Sprite, we have a points increase across the board on Delta 7B, which is still very meta viable, except for a two point reduction on Initiative 3. So um, from that regard, we're looking mainly at Jedi Knight, which hasn't had its points changed. Um, but hopefully this is going to open up some more uh, options when it comes to certain things. So Jedi Knight currently with Delta 7B is 52 points. Um, so we're not flying it as a four of, but it might make it a decent filler ship if you want to go for that kind of approach. It's worth thinking about at least. Um, the Naboo N1 Royal Starfighter, we have a three-point increase on Rick Olay. No surprises there. Rick is basically um, in every other medal list when it comes to the Republic. No points decrease elsewhere with this platform, but most notably, this brings Rick up to the same points as Padme Amidala. I still maintain that I think Padme should be a bit cheaper than Rick, if anything. I don't think her pilot ability is as relevant, but it's something that a lot of people have specced on. Um, since Padme was revealed, so I don't know, might make her more viable, but I think like a one point reduction would have been okay on Padme in this instance. That's just my opinion anyway. On the V19 Torrent Starfighter, we have point reduction across the board, except for the one pilot that matters, the Gold Squadron Trooper, which is basically seeing all the meta play right now. So crunching these points a bit closer together makes a lot of sense to me. We now have a six point band between um, the cheapest and most expensive pilot which is very, very tight. At the same time, I think that's okay for this platform. I don't think these pilot abilities are going to break the bank. I remember when we've looked through these ages ago when it was revealed, it, we were very underwhelmed with this one. So I think that's okay. We also have point reduction uh, by two points on each of R4P44 and R4P Astromech. It's fine, they're not really seeing meta play. And I think three and two points respectively makes a lot more sense on this card. Uh, moving down, one more uh, thing we have reduced in points is Battle Meditation, a pretty significant points decrease across the board. Most notably, it's now four points on the Jedi Starfighter um, with the Jedi Knight, the generic pilot, which I think opens them things up. If we're just going to look at that upgrade by itself from the Jedi Knight, they're 41 points each, so you can't exactly just do, you know, five of them. Um, but again, we're talking like generic list filler kind of stuff. It could be interesting to see a couple of named Jedi and a couple of generic Jedi. Um, I think that maybe is what FFG is trying to encourage here. Having always uh, Republic players going for like the three of or four of named pilots can be a bit tiresome sometimes. I think ultimately in the long run, having lists, at least some meta viable lists that have some generics in it, it just makes everything a bit easier to follow, especially for newer players where I have to only remember one pilot ability or two pilot abilities. And I don't have to remember all these kind of weird interactions with like Anakin and Mace Windu and Plooker and Ahsoka and all that kind of stuff. Um, just simplifying lists a little bit is good. So encouragement for the generics is always a good thing in my book. Moving over finally to the resistance. We have no points change in the fireball. We have a two point reduction across the board for the Star Fortress, apart from the generic, which only has a one point reduction. It's probably a good thing it's sitting at 51 points now. Um, I don't think this is really something we want to see at 50 because it might just go into a four of build and be just really unfun to play against. So something to look out for. Um, yeah, uh, there's no brainer here. This platform just doesn't see play. And it's really, really cool. Um, this faction is heavily dominated by its small ships, um, almost entirely by X-Wing and A-Wings, sometimes by transports and uh, like the transport pod, but you know, barely. Speaking of which, neither of those saw a point change at all. The RZ-2 A-Wing saw a one point increase on ZZ Tau or Tio. I thought it was an L. Hmm, that's fine. Um, I think this probably could have seen points increases across the board by one point, not just this one pilot. But that's okay. Um, maybe we'll see something interesting happen when we get these new pilots. Moving down to the Falcon, we have a two point reduction across the board, except again for the generic with a one point reduction. That's good. Um, I don't think either of these large base ships will see play because of these reductions here. Nevertheless, 
Hahn at 63 points is pretty enticing, I've got to admit. Um, it's less than a third of your squad, considering some of the things we can do with Hahn. Also seeing um, Poe Dameron uh, go down in points, which we'll see in a second, um, having those two together, you've got a lot more scope to actually go Han, Poe, and one other pilot. I was personally specking on these two pilots as a list when this all first came out, and now we've moved so far in the meta that you can put a third pilot in quite viably in this list. So that's, you know, I was not banking on something good back then, obviously. Um, the Resistance Sympathizer at 59 points. Sure, I don't really think we want this as a three of build, but it's an option. There's a few more points to put, like, crew in if you really want to do that. I'm cool with that. Moving on to the X-Wing, a one-point reduction in Poe Dameron, as I just mentioned, and a two-point reduction in Joff Sea Striker. All these sort of meta-viable pilots have just stayed where they are. And again, I think it's okay. Um, basically, I don't think this is going to do much to affect the X-Wing slash A-Wing resistance meta. I think it's still going to be here. I think it's still going to be what people are flying. I don't mind that, being that there are seven factions. I really do hope that one of these big ships sees somewhat, some kind of meta play over uh, the next six months, but I'm not convinced it's going to happen. Nevertheless, I will personally be um, trying out Pohan plus one. I think that could be quite a fun list. Apart from that, we have a one point reduction in Ferrosphere paint, which I think is fine personally. Um, still being at five points, incidental stress when your opponent can just fly around it. I've never been a huge fan of this card. I don't think five points is correct. I really think probably three points is more correct on this. Having said that, it's a generic upgrade. You can go on X-Wing and A-Wing, so maybe it's just something FFG are being very cautious about. I don't know. It doesn't wow me. Um, nothing really wows me on either of these three lists. I know a lot of people are talking about the Republic right now because, oh, look at all the blue on this list. Like, look how much it's been reduced. And honestly, just looking at this, I don't think anything is that startling. I mean, a lot of the meta was based around those Jedi Starfighters and Rico Lay, and they've all gone up in points, so, you know whatever it doesn't matter to me too much in any case thank you so much for watching everyone stay tuned i will be doing scum separatists and the generic upgrades in this next video that'll be out over the next day at some stage in the meantime don't forget to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the x-wing news coming out like me on facebook follow me on twitter and reddit all that social media stuff down in the description below if you want to be part of that also there is a patreon for the channel uh, massive props to everyone that has been following that. Um, if you would like to be part of that, we have the link for that in the description. You can join our Discord and help join in the chat and join in some of the tournaments we've been organizing over the past few months. And with all that in mind, I'll catch you all in the next video.